Hello, my name is Jolene Stevens. I am the founder of Practically Magic. Like you, I am a travel agent and travel agency owner um, of a very small agency, and we specialize in Disney vacations. And therefore, when we had over the last two years time to really look at our processes, one of the things that I did was look at our itineraries. And that's how I came up with Practically Magic because I realized I wanted a tool that had all of the Disney and Universal content already in it and that I could create an itinerary, duplicate itinerary, save time and create really beautiful itineraries for my clients. So without further ado, today we are talking about Epcot and the lightning lanes uh, surrounding Epcot and... I think one of the things that is a major point in all of our success is really setting expectations. I think it is central to what we do as travel agents. If we don't set the expectations, then clients can be disappointed. But if we set really good expectations, not only we can be successful, but our clients can also be successful. So there's a couple of different ways to add information to Practically Magic. And so I just want to talk to you a little bit about both of those ways. One, if you are an agency owner or if you manage multiple agents within an agency, um, I really recommend putting some of these notes in the agency content library. This will allow your agents to be able to pull that information once they are in the trips. It will show up in their content library. So they don't need to create this content. You can do it for them. So if you are um, managing multiple agents, go to the agency library and do it there. Now, if you are an individual, you can do this actually right in the trip. So if you are in your trip, what you do is just go ahead, you can add an activity. Um, and I just name it, make first lightning lane selection Epcot. And that way I know that it's specifically for Epcot. Um, and then I start putting in my notes from there. We will come back to the notes section as we go forward. Now, the other thing is uh, you will notice that that was um, add to the content library was checked and that will make sure that it adds it to your personal content library and you can pull that into any of your future trips. So. One thing to note about this is park hours were at 8.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. during the week that we're looking at this data. Now, I know that April right now of 2022 um, is showing that it's not opening at 8.30. My guess is that we'll probably see that change um, and it will probably be closer to this 8.30 a.m. Um, time frame. So. Um, I, if I were you, if I was doing April, I would hold off for a week or two until I saw what the park hours for Epcot actually are. So, um, one of the other things that I will say is, so I do two things. Obviously we've already talked about making the first lightning lane selection. The other thing that I have already added to my content library is Epcot and all of the other parks early entry. Um, I do put a start time on this and I will show you why in just a minute because I also will create or put in park hours just after this, but I will not assign a time for that. And um, the reason why is when you go to the trip overview, you can see I haven't done any of these other days, but this is my Epcot day. Anything that you put a time in there times are going to be pulled up into the trip overview. So I don't really care to put the uh, park hours starting at 8.30 because my guests are staying on property. I'm just going to put the early entry time for them to know that that's the time that they can show up. Um, but I do want them to have more information once they get into the actual itinerary where the details are. All right, so let's go right into the data here. So we need to talk first about the individual lightning lane of Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Now, I do not, I'm not going to show you the data for that only because um, one of the things that we know about those individual lightning lanes is that they can be booked uh, based on your preference. So if we try to pull times for those, it's not going to give us a really good idea because people are pulling the times that they want. So it's all over the place. The one thing though, that I will um, say though, is that 
the return times or the ability to book Remy's basically ends right around 8.30. We see them running out. So basically either right before the park opens or right when the park opens. So maybe some off property guests are being able to book Remy's right as they get into the park but most of those individual lightning lanes are gone by that time. And so only on property guests are having the opportunity to book that. So um, this is all of the information for all of the different attractions at Epcot. Um, we're going to get into more detail, but as what you can see from here is that this is super consistent for those kind of lower weight attractions. And really it's Soren, Test Track, and Frozen Ever After that we really are going to dive into because those are the things that are much more variable. Um, and again, this is super consistent. So when you look at Mission Space or Living with the Land, Seas with Nemo and Friends, you know, the return times are almost at the same distribution time. Now it goes out a little bit. So like at one o'clock, um, maybe you're maybe a little bit after that, but it is almost hour four, hour three. And you go up here and you're still around three or three thirty for these attractions. So super consistent, again, really important to note as you're doing um, those kind of second and third lightning lanes for your time. So let's get into Soren Around the World. Um, I chose to do Soren first because it actually has a much more consistent sort of uh, trends. Um, these are going to be the averages for that first week of March. So this is like, uh, it's actually February 27th through March 5th. Um, this is an average. And you can see at, in the morning, you have these kind of morning times. And then by the time you're at 12, you're out to about four to five o'clock. And so that's a significant gap between the time that you are booking it versus the time that it is. But then by the time it's three o'clock, you're out at about uh, about six or seven, again, about four hours. And then it kind of trails off. I wanna talk about this trailing off though because it's not probably what you think. Um, okay, so this is actually all of the data. So this is not averaged. One of the things that we definitely see for this week in all of the data, so it doesn't matter what park you're looking at, the 5th of March is the one that um, had the times closer to the distribution time in general. Um, so know that the 5th of March is a Saturday. And this is what I think is always interesting because I think that some people have this idea that, oh, the weekends are going to be uh, busier at Walt Disney World. And that's just not the case. Like typically those weekends, our travel days. So you're actually going to see lines, I, I think in general, have shorter wait times, the distribution times, um, you're going to have um, an easier time of getting distribution times closer to the time, I'm sorry, return times closer to the distribution time that you're seeing. Now, when we talk about um, the 28th was Monday, um, and then you have the first Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and all of those are more clumped in this area. And so I would, in general, follow this line and not the Saturday um, line down here. I will also say you do have these little um, kind of, I would say, outliers here on the second um, where you're getting some earlier return times than what you're seeing as in general. I know that a lot of people have said, you know, keep refreshing, keep refreshing, keep refreshing. I think that works for some clients. I don't think it necessarily works for all of them. We're going to break this down a little bit further. So if you have clients who are getting their first uh, lightning lane uh, between 7 and 7.30, what's interesting about this is I do feel like this is fairly uh, variable as far as the return time for this. Um, you know, you don't have it down here at kind of like this 8.30 a.m. and it going up. It's all the way out at 12 o'clock sometime. That's not as variable as we will see in the other attractions like Frozen Ever After and um, Test Track. Um, but 
just know that even if they're there, you know, at 7.05 ish time frame, it may be still out at 10 to 12 versus right at like that 8.30 time period. So, um, but you'll notice that all the way up until about 9.30, most all of them are before two. So that's super helpful information. This is test track average. It's a little bit all over the place. These are total anomalies and I would totally disregard these. Also, same with these, I would probably disregard these. But as we go in, let me show you. Um, this is what we see. So this is between 7 and 11 a.m. And the reason why I cut it off at 11 is because you basically don't have any more data after that. All of those uh, are gone. And if we look actually a little bit more, you'll see the fifth. Again, the fifth is eking out to, to be um, the, the latest distribution time. But if we look at something like the third... 8.30 is when they kind of stop. Um, you've got a little bit more leeway here in the fourth and the same um, with the second um, and then the, the 28th, which was a Monday around nine. So uh, test track, I think, you know, when we talk about uh, what you can do with this, I think test track, you definitely obviously want to try to be obtaining that one right at seven. But even if you do that, this is all over the place. And so I think that the thing that you need to do for setting expectations is make sure that your client knows it's kind of a wild card when you're trying to get uh, a test track lightning lane at that seven to 705, 710, uh, 720, 715. They're all over the place and you're, you won't know when you are going to get that return time. And I think it's important to do that. So, and having flexibility in your schedule, in your itinerary for that, um, I think is really, really important. So maybe in your itinerary, you want to be in future world sometime, uh, you know, in, in the morning to late morning, and then in the afternoon, hoping <laughs> that that covers, um, it, you know, the times that they could possibly get test track. So. This is showing you um, a little bit uh, of a more granular view between seven and eight. Again, it's super strange that you have all of these kind of across the board, you know, different days it was doing different things and you had a wide stretch here at like, this is like 705 um, or 710. Um, and on some days it was out at eight o'clock and some days it was at 710. And I think that as an agent, that can be super frustrating. Um, but I also think it's important information for you to know. So that is that. And then if we go between 8 and 8.50, what you'll notice though now is you're almost definitely going to be later in the in the day. The one thing that I will caution, you know, I, I, I like the idea of having uh, a more predictable schedule. Um, the only thing that worries me is that um, there was one day where uh, by about 8.30, there were no more. And so waiting, you know, having the client wait to know like, okay, yeah, your test track is going to be sometime in the second half of your day makes me a little bit nervous. But I think doing this kind of like 8 a.m., knowing like, okay, I know then that my client needs to be in future world around four, five, six-ish um, that may be more important to have predictability than doing it over here where it's all over the place um, and just to toggle back and forth. So we definitely do see a trend. This is definitely earlier in the day, at least once you hit about 720. And then by 8, between 8 and 9, you're in the, the second half of that day. And then this is 9 to, to 10. And again, you can see... We have a whole day that's uh, gone here. Um, the third, there were there were no more lightning lanes at all. 
Um, and that's why I'm like, oh, it, it's it's a little risky telling a client to wait because they do run out. Um, and and but it, you can see in this, it definitely um, between that six and eight p.m. If you wait until nine, if you have an off property guest, they're definitely getting kind of like that eight to or you know around six to eight p.m. time frame for that. When we go to frozen ever after again, this these are total like outliers anomalies. Like I would not <laughs> recommend um, using these times as strategies. As you can see, by about mm, eleven o'clock, uh, all gone. So let's take a little bit deeper look in that. And this is similar to test track. It's all over the place. Like in the morning, what you're seeing here is just a, a, such a wide variety of times. I don't think that you have the ability to set the expectation with the guest for what time they would get. Um, I think it's, it's going to be one of those things where they will need to have some sort of flexibility to understand. Or the other part of this is that, you know, if they don't need to do both test track and frozen ever after. Um, and if they just need to do one, maybe they just rope drop that one. They forget about even doing that second one and they use Soren as their first one because they know that they can go um, and do that. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as, as we go along. Um, this is a breakout, uh, again, kind of a, a more um, detailed view between 7 and 8 a.m., Again, you have these big spreads of time. Um, and so here's the thing. I, the data that I got from thrilldata.com, um, who they have great data. I'm so grateful to them for sharing their data. Um, if you don't know them, check them out, thrilldata.com. Their data is laid out a little bit different than this. This is how my brain works and visually how, how it works for me. So I'm different ways work for different people. Check them out, though. Um, they didn't have uh, 7 a.m. I'm I'm guessing part of that is that they uh, the computer system is so overwhelmed at that at that time that it's hard to get hard to pull uh, correct data. But the other thing that I will say is when I did when I do look at some of their data that does pull it at seven, um, I don't see a ton of early morning uh, specifically for test track. Um, and we had a conversation in the session about this, and it may be that they don't distribute a ton of morning lightning lanes for test track, uh, since many times it's, it's down. But again, uh, once we get into that, uh, eight to nine, it's definitely, you know, kind of the 4 PM and after. So again, if you're trying to put your client in the world showcase, in the evening with Frozen as one of their lightning lanes, I would have them hold off and, you know, wait until that kind of 8 a.m. to see if you could, you know, get it uh, closer to that time frame. Um, I think this really, you have to look at who your client is. If you have a client who is already, you know, they're, they're already on mouse dining and they're already like monitoring stuff and they're, you know, they are very well versed in the app and refreshing and checking. Um, I think the set kind of strategy could be really good strategy, um, especially with Frozen Ever After since it's out in the world showcase. So um, that's that. Again, this is from nine to 10. You can see it uh, gets uh, super spotty. Not all of the days have, you know, by the third, uh, this is the third, there's nothing after nine o'clock. Um, and uh, this is very, very sparse. So uh, this is to tell you that you cannot do frozen and test track. You have to choose one or the other. Um, and that I think is an important piece of your uh, planning is that you're going to need to talk to the client to find out what is their uh, priority for that park. Um, because if this, so this park opened at 8.30, so by 10.30 you're here. And so the odds of you getting something else you know, the, the opposite of that. So if you had done frozen ever after, and then you're trying to get test track odds are, is that you're probably not going to get it. Um, but you definitely have the ability to get Soren. 
And so that's an important thing to know. So I would do Soren as your second, certainly, and know that uh, at that 1030-ish mark, if you haven't written this and you're, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that you've got a later time for Frozen or Test Track and at 1030, your guests can get their second one, you know, at, at that between three and four, um, is when they're going to have that Soren experience. So you can have your itineraries reflect that. So that's uh, good information there as far as your second. Um, so a couple of things about this. This is kind of how I would do it. Again, putting in the notes, make your first lightning lane selection at 7 a.m., Make sure you're logged in. Um, reserve Remy's Ratatouille. I would typically try for four. But uh, in that case, if I was trying to do Soren at four, I would probably say maybe try to do Remy's around five or six, um, depending on if they have some sort of dining reservation back there also. Um, again, early entry we have, and then Epcot hours. Um, this is Soren. And again, I, I pulled this out from the standpoint of, okay, looking at this time frame for that second, uh, that second lightning lane. So you have between one and two on here. If they're a little bit past that, again, it's going to be around that three o'clock time period. And then I also put this in there. So at 1030, I'm actually putting it in their uh, itinerary as something to go and make another lightning lane selection. And that's important to me because I, you know, it, I used to use max pass all the time and I would set an alarm on my uh, phone to be like, okay, this is the time that you can make your next selection. And I want to make sure that my clients have that expectation that yes, I'm going to probably have to set an alarm on my clock for two hours after the park opens because my first lightning lane may not uh, ha be before that. Um, so that's a really important thing. So average wait times, again, what do we want to make sure that our clients are not waiting in? Obviously, Remy's Ratatouille. So I highly recommend purchasing that. Obviously, if they're coming in the back of Epcot by the International Gateway, you know, being able to, uh, to do that first thing, I think is an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, sort of uh, strategy. But again, I think that they have to be there, uh, you know, before the park is quote unquote open for early entry. We all know that they let you go through the the tickets and security before typically the, the park is actually open. And I think if they're in that line, that's a, also a really, really good strategy. So then they don't have to purchase that. But if they're not, or if they're coming in the front, Definitely that individual lightning lane is a great option. And then test track or frozen ever after, you know, if you were going to, let's say, purchase Remy's Ratatouille. And then when we talk about frozen ever after, um, if they're coming in the back way, doing frozen ever after, actually either frozen ever after or test track, I think are, are a fine way to do that. I know it really changes day by day in Epcot as far as what you can queue for. Like I've been into Epcot, got there in a uh, half an hour before park opens and I was coming through the international gateway and we were all queued up for test track. And so once the park opened, uh, it was probably 25 minute wait. Um, but what was interesting about that is that they were letting the international gateway uh, people queue up, but then at park open, you had a total sea of people coming in to, from the front of the park, starting to line up for test track at that point. And they were like, definitely more like 45 minutes to an hour behind us. So, um, I think that also is going to depend on where your clients are coming from. And unfortunately, um, parks, uh, change every day as far as how far they let people in and what they let them do. Um, but again, Soren, Soren, easy one to get as that second or even even third ish, and then all of these are super easy as far as the return time uh, versus the distribution time. Super super simple. So, um, 
I hope this was super helpful. I talked super fast on this. Please let me know what questions you have. Um, or if you would like me to go back and talk about specific um, dates or um, a specific attraction, I think the biggest thing that is super helpful to know is when we are talking about, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning, is when we talk about these ones, these are, you know, after you get done with that test track or that frozen ever after, um, if you can uh, disregard one of those and do Soren first and rope drop the other one, this is a really great way to experience Epcot. So when we talk about, I don't know, you know, do, do Soren and you probably can get something kind of mid-morning-ish. Um, and maybe you do test track right at the beginning of the day, but then you go over to Soren and then, you know, sees with Nemo and friends, please, 11, 11, 12, the, the return time is 12, you know, two, you're returning at two. So these things are so close that this is a great way to experience Epcot if you're not needing to um, kind of stack those other ones. So hope this was helpful. Um, the Magic Kingdom one is, um, I, I'm working on that one and getting a video for that one to upload. If you missed it, um, our Disney Hollywood Studios one is on Tuesday. Um, and then our Disney's Animal Kingdom is next Thursday. So those, the dates for those are the 22nd and 24th. If you visit Practically Magic Facebook page. You can find the events there and register there. Also, if you want to sign up for emails, just shoot hello at practicallymagic.co and I will add you for future uh, options for different workshops and different classes that I'm holding on itinerary creation. Um, and of course, if you have any questions on Practically Magic itself, please let me know. I always like to hear what you are looking for. I also have a form right now where I'm asking people to prioritize our next feature. So if you have ideas, please let me know. Again, it's hello at practicallymagic.co. All right. Have a wonderful day.